Hello everybody and welcome back to another Bangum Tree of Ruby, Volume 4, Episode 5, as per usual, outro. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good volume so far. I've been enjoying it quite a bit, as can be seen from the length of the episodes. It's certainly, it has been enjoyable and uh, it has a lot of... I, I, I do actually kind of like the path that a lot of the main four characters are taking different... Well, they... I, I suppose Jean should be counted as the main character as well. A lot of them are taking different paths that allows us to focus on singular characters quite a bit more than oh, if they all stuck together, because then they would be stealing spotlight from one another. And since Ruby has such a, shall we say, straightforward personality, it doesn't really hurt that much that Jean is sharing the spotlight there. So, and this time around we'll be uh, probably focusing more again on Blake, which is completely fine considering that Faunus is kind of the focal point for the show, so... Yeah, let's just start with the episode proper. Oh yeah, it's Mana... Epi name of the episode is Menagerie. That's some smooth animation! <laughs> I really do wonder, what advantage does rabbit ears give you? I can see cat ears and cat eyes and monkey's tail and all that sort of thing, but rabbit ears? That doesn't seem all that useful, unless it's like it's like in Legend of Zelda where it gives you a huge speed boost, but I can't see that being really all that useful. Although, considering that I'm thinking about the faunus there, fauna part, like that would be an upgrade, that might be considered extremely racist now that I think about it. Oh well. why there would be some animosity between the humans and the faunus, because that is a really dick move, considering how normal the faunus are, but just, oh man, the racial tensions are just surprisingly topical now, aren't they, huh? Okay, maybe not topical, but they are surprising, very, very apparent. Oh, yeah? Which 
one's yours. Can you see it from here? Kind of. Is it that one? What about that tiny one down there? <laughs> Actually, I really do like the design here because um, if you're looking at this, you can see that it's cramped full of little houses and such. That's actually like surprisingly good attention to detail. Well, uh, surprising, surprising. It's good attention to detail, but it's crucial to have that because otherwise that whole illusion of being a cramped city would just disappear. So it's good to have that kind of attention to detail there. It's just... I do appreciate little things, and that's a little thing that's rather important, so it's pretty well done. That one. Oh. <laughs> you mean she's a princess or something? It's just been a long time since I've seen my friend. You know, I came all this way. Okay, if we're being honest, that's kind of intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... The show has this tendency to have a very straightforward, very by-the-numbers comedy segment to it, which is very much just like the straight man and the, you know, the comedy guy. And that's uh, fine enough. It's a simplistic formula for comedy, and it's functional, and the creators know how to make it work. So uh, it's pretty nice, I must admit. Is that your mother? Hey, yeah. I'm, I must say, I like how their, how much their ears are animated. It just makes them seem actually part of their bodies instead of, uni, you know, being apparels. That's well, manly man. We were horrified when we heard the news. The kingdom of Vale wasn't perfect, but it certainly didn't deserve what happened. So Please, I knew she that isn't the slightest bit true. You should have seen him pacing. <laughs> you guys have nothing to worry about. I've seen your daughter in action before. And trust me, she's got some moves. <laughs> <laughs> and what exactly do you mean by that? <laughs> I, uh, well, you see, sir, it's just that... Why is he here again? <laughs> She's definitely above average. I mean, uh <laughs> <laughs> This tea is really good. I, I th that's a small touch, but I like what Wukong son using her his tail like that. It, it, it's just I like the animation style. I, 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 it has grown on me quite a bit. God dang. <laughs> what? Dad! Hey, what's wrong? Miss Kim? 
Miss Gretagon. We had no idea you'd return. What are you doing talking to these people? This is Corsic and Fennec Albe. They represent the White Fang here in Menagerie. Those psychos are here too? Young man, I'm not sure what you've heard of our organization, but I can assure you they're not nearly as ferocious as the media would have you believe. What we've heard? We've seen firsthand. Your fanatics slaughtered people. What is she talking about? Precisely what we came to discuss with you, Your Grace. Is everything all right? Considering the amount of respect they clearly have for him, I wonder what exactly the position in Manager is, if they are actually the rulers. That would be quite some quite some coincidence that she and uh, Weiss ran together, because both of them are in quite a considerable situation of power. And yeah, well, it's... <laughs> wow, that is such a sudden escalation of tension. That's, that's pretty unprecedented, I must say. Wait, you guys seriously don't know? Know what? The White Fang was at the fall of Beacon. They attacked innocent civilians, and they released Grimm into the school. Is this true? Sadly, Your Grace, it is. Don't act like That's you're... enough! Explain yourselves. <laughs> Though it aims us to admit, it has become apparent that the veil branch of the White Fang is no longer operating under orders of High Leader Khan. Rather, they've elected to follow the rule of one, Adam Taurus. Oh! Okay, so Adam has just formed a rebellion on his own. That is almost a believable excuse, but not enough. Kill them all. Uh, that is certainly adding quite a bit of intrigue to all this whole thing. I believe you are familiar with the young addict and his extremely philosophy. You know, Beacon wasn't the first time the Fang started shooting up Bale. The High Council had their suspicions of a splinter group, but they could prove nothing until this latest incident. Incident? People are dead. And it is a tragedy. Your Grace, we came to assure you that Brother Taurus and his followers do not represent the will of the White Fang. <laughs> and how can I be sure of that? We understand if you bear any skepticism for these claims. The White Fang's tactics are admittedly more aggressive since you stepped down as high leader and became chief of menagerie. But this... That is actually a pretty smooth way to just give a quite a bit of exposition there, I must say. That, that, that little line there just explained so much about a lot of things. This is actually really good exposition in my opinion. Maybe a bit ham-handed and kind of coincidental, but hey, coincidences are what what kind of what breed conflict, so it's pretty good. Oh my god. Huh. Chieftain of Menagerie. That is quite the title, I must say, and he was the ex-leader, the previous leader of White Fang as well. That's... These are all quite important tidbits of information, I must say. No oh boy. We have ample documentation from the council meeting, as well as several strategies to apprehend and punish these strays if you care to review them. I will. But another day. I'd like some time. But of course, you're brave. We completely understand. It was a pleasure to see you again. We were saddened when we heard of your departure from the White Fang. But understand that you can no longer support our cause. It is a wearying fight, after all. Who says I'm done fighting? Hmm. If you ever do wish to return, you need me to come find us. Sister Ilya would be elated. 
This is quite some information here. So those guys were creepy. I really don't like you. <laughs> Uh. An interesting development, wouldn't you say? Interesting indeed. So, shall we inform Brother Adam? We shall. Well, that is unfortunate. I was hoping that the White Fang would still be at least partially neutral clearly they are not that is actually kind of unfortunate and makes this all situation far too much of a parallel to real life though I'm not gonna draw that parallel no I'm, am I gonna talk about that but that is yeah that is quite the conflicted situation I must say Could you be any less obvious of a villain? <laughs> Jesus. I mean, we know he is, but that is such creepy behavior. God damn. That's it. That's it. Let's let's give a second of more look to these character designs and the town design because they have put a lot of effort into this, so, you know, it just, it just goes to show, just pay respect to the design, because the, they have paid a lot of, the, they have paid a lot of attention to design, especially like, her de detail design is something that I really quite adore, so, yeah, just, everything's very well designed in my opinion, and that's one manly man, must say. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, 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 well. What to say? Well, it was a very Blake-centric episode, and these episodes are very irregular in their length, which is not bad. It's just rather off-putting and weird. It's really strange because it means that the episodes vary in length and. It really goes to show that the creators really have to pay attention to how they pace the episodes out. Otherwise, they are really going to screw up the pacing. Because I, I, I do believe that these are cuts made to... <laughs> they have cut these episodes to make the pacing better instead of, you know, pacing the episodes based on these lengths. It's because so far, the pacing in these episodes has been pretty good in my opinion. So, yeah, it, the pacing is pretty good. Now, the story part of this episode actually is pretty important and interesting and gives a lot of crucial information, especially considering, well, the fight fa White Fang, obviously, because that is a, a an association that has some real-world equivalence to them. And, uh, yeah, that's rather unfortunate. That's not something that I'm gonna talk about and I hope that nobody will bring up because th that's always kind of that's not supposed to be the point here <sighs> but it's just interesting to see how how much it has been integrated to the story and how everything comes back together quite nicely so as in Blake's father being the uh, the ex-leader of the, the previous leader of the White, White Fang, and how much the White Fang is keeping it under covers that Adam is still the leader, or probably the leader of the White Fang. It's all kind of muddied there. It's pretty good in my opinion. All done pretty well. I quite like this episode, because it did quite a lot of things rather subtly, and had, it had really good pacing, and it had a lot of story importance, rele story le relevance, and it showed two really new characters, and they're really good character designs, it's just, I quite liked it. Yeah, mostly though, though because of the fantastic pacing, just an immaculate job at pacing, in my opinion. That's about all I have to say for now. 
thank you all very much for watching. I hope to in the future have a great day and stay awesome. Ganmu out. Thank you very much for watching.